This is Seymour Rocks reporting from Down Under. I just want to do a little bit of an update on the uh, whole issue of the uh, Russian submarine incident. Um, uh, Florida Maquis is, um, has, has done a couple of pieces which I'll share with you. Uh, I'm not totally enamored with uh, Florida Maquis. He sounds pretty uh, informed um, and authoritative, but unlike the true news guys, um, he doesn't say that he's speculating, he's just presenting um, what he presents as, 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 as the truth, uh, and there's no qualifying. Um, so the first thing I want to do is just to go back over uh, uh, something from a couple of weeks ago. I've looked for the original item that I uh, posted on this, but I couldn't find it. Uh, but I did find a couple of um, items, uh, so I'll share those now. A couple of weeks ago, um, True News pointed out um, that the New York Times had written an article, an editorial, uh, saying that they were carrying out cyber warfare against Russia. And then this was actually uh, taken down um, from the New York Times. Uh, and uh, amongst all the stuff that I've got, I can't really find it at the moment, but I did find this. And this is uh, John Bolton. United States engaged in cyber warfare with Russia and others. The National Security Advisor says other countries need to learn you will pay a price for cyber attacks against the USA. Um, he appeared with at, at the Wall Street Journal CFO Network annual meeting in Washington, D.C. during a conversation on stage with associate editor John Bussey. He told the audience of the closed door event, the purpose of which is to say Russia or anyone else that's engaged in cyber operations against us, you will pay a price um, if we find that you are doing this and we will impose costs on you until you get the point that it's not worth your while to use cyber against us. But the whole thing is that um, this was uh, a message to Russia and others in the New York Times. Uh, that the United States is actually doing it to them. I've been looking and looking uh, for the article uh, that I put up uh, some weeks ago um, about uh, US uh, cyber warfare, um, and I can't find it, but I did indeed find this. So I'm just gonna play a couple, a minute or so of this report. A new report says the U.S. is escalating its cyber responses to Russia by targeting its power grid. The New York Times published this article over the weekend. It highlights how the U.S. military may be preparing to counter Moscow's aggression in cyberspace. Multiple security officials confirmed the report. But President Trump says it's a lie. Over Twitter, he accused the Times of engaging in a, quote, virtual act of treason over the report. The Times responded by calling that language, quote, dangerous. CBS News intelligence and national security reporter Olivia Gazas is following this story from Washington. Uh, Olivia. So the major development, of course, that it reported is that the U.S. has actually placed malware implants into Russia's power and energy grid and then possibly other targets. Um, and that, that has the potential, presumably, to take them offline. It's a significant step up from some of the purely reconnaissance work that we've been doing on Russia's grid in the past because it's got that active component. Um, the second thing is that U.S. Cyber Command, which is this arm of the military that's charged with conducting offensive and defensive uh, actions in, in cyberspace, is reported taking full advantage of these greater leeways that it's been given. Uh, it's gotten new legal authorities via Congress, and it's gotten a directive from the president uh, to be able to engage in these clandestine military activities and operations in the cyber domain. But the third thing uh, that I think uh, the Times raises and is really troubling is significant questions about how escalation is going to work in cyberspace. There are just no norms right now that determine what is an act of vandalism, what is an act of terrorism, and what is an act of 
war. All of those things are going to be at the discretion of the president and Congress. But until somebody pulls the trigger on something like this, it's going to be difficult to determine what kind of action will warrant either escalation or retaliation. Yeah, I do watch um, Florida Mackey um, uh, from time to time. He had some excellent stuff, especially when it came to the attempted coup on Venezuela. Um, and he does seem to have his head well and truly screwed on. Um, but when he's talking about these things, you've got to be realised that he talks about some of these other things as well. In fact, this particular video titled Le Shark Class Laying Sea Mines talks about another um, specific mission of the Loshark class submarine. They have sea mines, smart mines that exist that need to be laid on the seabed a very specific way. They lie there undetected with passive sensors. And every ship out there has a unique signature, a unique sound and wake and footprint that it leaves when it goes by above something like this. No two ships are identical. And these mines are so sensitive that they can pick up a specific ship and identify a specific ship and then activate itself and then go to the surface and explode. This is what we were alleging back with the situation with the Fitzgerald. The under the water line damage looked a lot more like mine damage. And we also showed that there was only one event in history where a ship like this lost a starboard propeller and it was the result of sea mine damage and that was the uss princeton so it just lent more credibility that to the idea that the fitzgerald was attacked that's why we got into the situation with a little shark now what you should really be worried about isn't necessarily what the Loshark was doing. Yes, it can lay these smart mines, and yes, it can tap um, these cables and intercept secure communications. But what the presence of the Loshark shows is the presence of its mothership, the Belgorod. And that's this image right here. If you look at this little tiny submarine that's kind of tucked up underneath here, this is the Loshark. It has basically seven orbs inside, and ironically, it's named after a Russian horse. Hint, hint. But this larger mothership has the ability to carry something called Poseidon. The Russians call it Poseidon. We call it Canyon, with a K. And it is a nuclear submarine, a nu basically an autonomous nuclear weapon on a giant torpedo. Best way to describe it. Now, what the Russians are more than likely doing is completing this network they have called SOSIS. It's basically, not SOSIS, pardon me, it's called Harmony. It's like NATO's SOSIS, the sensor network. And once they complete it, they'll have the ability to detect dolphins, basically, in the Arctic. And if you look here at this picture, there's this yellow tank-looking thing right here. Um, nuclear turbine generator need, needed to be put down on the seafloor to operate this Harmony network. I know we've covered a lot of things so far. Um, but basically the idea is this, they were doing something and if there was an accident, it's not really the accident itself that you need to worry about. It's the presence of this vessel and what they're doing with it. Now that missile I'm talking about, the mothership here has the ability to carry six of them, each being 55 megatons. These independent torpedoes, that are basically nuclear weapons have the ability to deploy at 3,000 meters and swim at 100 knots.
from my Navy guy. I would like to clear up another aspect of the story regarding the submarine, the Russian submarine, the accident that uh, killed 14 sailors. Many people think that what you're about to see here is the biggest threat from a submarine. This is, I believe, one of their Kilo class. Maybe it's a Yasm class. I'm not sure. Firing caliber cruise missiles into Syria. The biggest threat that's going to come from one of these submarines is cutting cables. And I'm going to try to explain that for you today. I know it doesn't seem like that would be the case, but truly it is. And what they do, and this is an important aspect of this that I need everyone to understand, is they don't just go out and cut the cable and then sail away and go, ha, 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 we cut off your internet and then wait for a repair ship to go out there and fix it. What they do is this, and here's the important part. They cut one section of cable and it goes down. Then they go 5, 10, 15 miles downrange on the cable, and they cut it again. But this time, they put in a tapping device. See, with the cable down, nobody knows what the hell's going on from the first cut. They put this tapping device on that can't be detected other than by their own technology. Then, of course, the repair ship shows up at some point fixes the original first cut, the cable comes back up, and nobody is aware that the tapping device has been put on. This is what's happening. Because that device they put on just allows the free flow of the information. It just records it and sends it to someplace who knows. And this is what Russia has been trying to do is get their own private network that has access to all of the information in real time with nothing being um, hidden with uh, cryptographs or with any type of encryption. So that's why that's going to be a problem because what happens is since 99% of our military's encrypted information goes through these cables. The concept of mutually assured destruction goes away because the commands can be intercepted. They can be intercepted and shut down. So this uh, Loshark works in tandem with a vessel called the Yantar, which has its own submersibles which does the exact same thing. And while they just call it research vessels, everything that's going on happens at such uh, extreme depths, there's no way to really track it. So that's basically what I've got to bring to the table today. Um, just little bits and pieces of, uh, of the puzzle. Um, yeah, it's not looking too good is it um anyway i'll leave the uh the links for all of this uh in the description box below see more rocks reporting from down under